Hello, ladies and gents. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Professor. Good Hello, Manuj. Thank you. Thank you for uh, replying. All right. <clears throat> Good. <coughs> so, um, I'm going to have to take a few breaks halfway through this thing because I'm like... Um, my head is kind of exploding, but uh, there are a few things that we need to go through, and it's very important. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, uh, we are going to talk about um, uh, algorithms and understand what they are. So, I'm gonna I'm not going to go deeply into it because there are so many different things that you can uh, look at, but I'm going to talk about some of the things that it's there and you can take that methodology and expand it to everything what algorithms are in um, standard template library is a standard library is that standard template li template libraries that is they essentially have written several different functions and objects classes created it to um, um, perform standard algorithms that are out there like if you want to search for something if you want to um, sort things if you want to create a hash table if you want to create a um, I don't know whatever standard thing that you want to do out there anything that you can think of there is a there is a standard template a template library for it <clears throat> so we're gonna go through it and uh, something important that you need to know um, by default you should always use use algorithms instead of using loops because that uh, uh, essentially they are extremely faster and they're more efficient than loops so I'm gonna go through them so you can see exactly how they are before talking about that we have to understand about certain um, objects and algorithms and operations in, in that standard that algorithms in C++ utilize. <clears throat> the very uh, first thing that we need to understand are uh, what are uh, 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 wrapper classes, what are function templates, and what are operator classes. We need to understand these things before we can actually use <clears throat> before we can actually use algorithms. Um, an algorithm um, for an algorithm to work what is an algorithm can anybody tell me what does it mean an algorithm actually when I say algorithm what does it mean like you, you, everybody heard of it but uh, how many people act as, I mean like who can tell me uh, what an algorithm is actually I can actually select some pick you guys one of you guys to talk so let me choose that feature I can't do that in, in class but in here I can say um, <laughs> there you go uh, tell me uh, what do you think an algorithm is I think an algorithm is like a set of rules or instructions that are to be followed that's beautiful a set set of rules and instruction to be followed isn't that essentially uh, a logic that we write to accomplish something like uh, if I want to go through um, uh, say uh, checking to see what is the uh, largest number value between some values the algorithm is to loop through them grab the first one compare it to the other ones if it is smaller and, and any of those items swap the values and this action this logic that I go through to find the maximum value between series of values is called an algorithm. Do we understand this? So now an, an algorithm essentially means how to do certain thing to accomplish a task. Now an algorithm to do something needs values to receive, it needs values to return, not only that, it needs logic to receive and logic to return if needed. Forget about returning logic, it needs logics to receive. Like for example, if I want to find 
the largest values between large like if I want to get maximum values between series of cars then what is the definition of maximum value is it how big their gas tank is it is how much their power is so the action of comparison between two objects by itself can have a logic of its own uh, an algorithm of its own and for uh, a, a function a function of its own a logic of its own and for an algorithm to be able to apply that logic to do something bigger it needs that logic for that we learned something anybody remembers what did we learn to pass the logic around anyone we learned something to pass the logic around lambda expression lambda is actually shorthanding a logic when a logic is not really used so many times over and over you just want to quickly write the logic and pass it through that's lambda but you're close the function to pointers Pointers to functions. <laughs> Thank you. Pointer to functions. Function to pointers. No pointer. A pointer to functions. Functors. These were these were the things that we learned. We learned pointer to function. We need to learn functors. Using these things, I can pass things around, which is very good. But again, anything you want to do, there is uh, some kind of a, a standard library for it, and one of those things are called. Uh, uh, rapper classes. Now, rapper classes are not people who are rapping, okay? <laughs> rapper classes are classes who wrap things and pass them around, okay? So, wrap things, essentially put it, I'm going to wrap it in some kind of a gift thingy and then gift wrap it and pass it around. That's what wrappers are. So, essentially, they contain something and pass it around. Now, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. Thank you. Uh, it's okay. So um, this, uh, I hear a voice. I'm happy. It means actually somebody's listening. So we know pointer to functions and things like that that we want to, to, to use and pass and we know how to do it. But there is a wrap. There is something that you can actually wrap a function in it and pass that thing around instead of using certain so like that you can actually enforce what type of function you want to pass it on we call those things func function wrappers so let's say if i have something like uh, um, long multiply and i'm going to have over here long x and long y and i'm going to say over here return x multiplied by y so if I want to pass this function around through an, a variable, what I can do, first of all, I have to include uh, what we call functional header file. And then in this functional header file of yours, then you have to say, I have a function. So this function that you see is actually a template. It's called a function wrapper that is going to return along and receive couple of longs or I can let's make it like this I'm gonna say int and int just want to for the heck of uh, 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 just for the sake of having two different things so you don't see long 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 so it's something like that it's gonna be long int Int. So I'm going to say it's going to wrap any function that returns a long and receives two integers. And I'm going to call that one A. So I'm going to say, and I'm going to say that's equal to mo. That's the multiplication thing over there that I have. Okay. So, and if now I want to use that multiplication, I can use A instead. So I can say, for example, A. Um, um, 5 and 10, something like that. And if I run this program, 
you will see that 50 is passed. So you can literally pass this as a variable around. You can define a variable like that and pass something through it. So like this, you can pass functions with different types of structures around. So it kind of replaces your pointer to function and, and wraps it. This is exactly what wrappers are. They are actually classes written to make your life easier doing things that is, uh, you have to write lots of code. It just wraps it for you. Um, and the same thing, like I can have something like uh, a class, uh, multiply and in this multiply class of mine I'm gonna have uh, uh, a functor so I'm gonna have over here long and in here I'm gonna say operator and I'm gonna pass say int x and int y and return uh, long x multiply by y why is it giving me an error in here class multiply am I missing something here operator is misspelled professor oh. thank you <laughs> thank you Okay, so operator, that's that, that's so. So now I can actually do the exact same thing. And as you see, these function signatures are the same. So I can actually say <coughs> func function again. And in here, I'm going to say again long int and int. And in here, it's a, it's a functor, right? So fa functor uh, a, and I'm going to set that one to uh, the uh, function called of that one. So I'm going to say multi apply so it actually sets it to the object and you can do the exact same thing as a lambda too so again I can go function uh, again long int uh, int and int again and in here I can say lambda and the lambda thing of mine will be uh, essentially a lambda that receives an int x and an int y and returns a long x multiplied by uh, y. Let me see what else do we have over here that is Now this time I did not make any. I think you forgot a semicolon at the end of line 20. The, the audio was very low, so I did not get that. Return long x, y, y. She said about the semicolon on line 21, Professor. Yeah, there you go. And this one is not like that. Oh. And this is like that. Okay, so yeah, so this, uh, so it was actually that one. But anyway, so so now the same thing over here. Now I can go far, I don't know, 20, 30, 20, 10, and L, and I can go C out. Lambda, I don't know, 3 and 10. So now I have three different things and as you see the signatures are all the same it does not make any difference as long as the signature of functions are the same these function wrappers work for all of them and it works perfectly now it doesn't make sense now but later when we are going to algorithms you'll see that sometimes you need to pass a function to an algorithm to do certain type of things you see that that algorithm is actually receiving a function wrapper therefore you wrap your function inside the wrapper and you pass it along uh, are we okay down to this point? All right, so this is function wrappers. The next thing that is a very simple concept, but you will see that 
Um, what is the problem with a reference? A reference cannot be set to anything after it's created. So you cannot set a reference to um, to another value after after the fact. You cannot have an array of references, let's put it that way. You cannot have a vector of references. You can't have something like that. To fix that problem, they created a wrapper that gives you a reference. And unlike references, you can actually pass them around. Okay? So the syntax for it is quite simple. So um, say you have uh, a long uh, uh, L that is the, um, the value, whatever, L, something like that. And then you can create what we call a reference wrapper. And this reference wrapper wraps a reference of type long. And let's call it, I don't know, capital L. And I'm going to make that one to be uh, the lowercase L. So this L becomes a reference of the other one. And uh, it, as, as simple as that, so I can hear it say over here, for example, uh, uh, C out L and print the number and you'll see two ten is printed and in here I can say something like L uh, L plus equal 10 and I'll go C out L again uh, this is what happens okay so down to this point no biggie why I could just use this reference what is the difference with me this and that. It's This is the syntax for it. Now I'm going to explain what does a reference wrapper is used for. So we understand the syntax of reference reference wrappers, right? So essentially any reference that you want, you write a reference wrapper and you put the type over here and it creates a reference for you. And this reference wrapper can be used anywhere that you have used the reference till now. So whenever you use the reference, you can use this one. It absolutely makes no difference. So, but take a look at this one. Let's say I have a vector, okay, and this vector of mine. Um, So I have a vector. I'm going to create a vector. Uh, I'm going to put int, uh, let's say, v. And 6 of them, and I'm going to say that's 20. OK, so in here, I have a vector of values, 6 of them, and each of them is 20. Now, what I can do that I could not do before, I could not, I could not create a vector of integer references. You can't do that. You can't do this. This cannot be done because, oh, you cannot create a reference uh, of vectors because you cannot, you have to set it right off the bat. You cannot set it later on. If I immediately set it right now, sure, but if I do not immediately set it, I cannot create a reference, vector as reference references and later on add them to something but with reference wrappers <coughs> my apologies all right but with reference wrappers I can actually say over here reference wrapper int and say call over here call it r and I'm going to say v dot begin and uh, and v dot end and now what I can do over here is like let's write a for loop over here. I'm going to say for auto reference i, and I'm going to put in v, and and then in here I'm going to say c out 
i and i'm going to put spaces between them so that's what i'm printing and now in here i'm going to say uh, for auto reference uh what do i call it what is it j and i'm going to put it in r now in here i'm going to say j uh, plus equal 10 okay um and let's put something like this so in here i'm going to say integer uh integer val set to 10 in here i'm going to say val plus plus okay so i'll do that now and i'm and then i'm going to show the original values i had back in v so now what you do what, by doing something like this you will see that i can have a reference of new line you can see that i can have a reference of values in a vector to other values of a vector and i can always set the values of this vector to another one and then refer to the next one and next one and next one and, and keep using this as uh, uh, an array of references as simple as that so unlike regular references that you that you cannot carry them around you have to initialize them immediately when you create them with uh, reference wrappers you can uh, uh, you can uh, pass the reference around like a variable. Simple as that. Uh, um, we're going to see it in algorithms too. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's that. Next thing. To pass logic around, sometimes you need to have um, to pass logic around. Sometimes you need to have uh, a function. S let's put it this way. Um, I hmm. going back to that to that multiply thingy. So in here, if I if I create that function again, so it was say long multiply long x and long y oh return <laughs> x multiply y so when when i create this if i create a pointer of this one and pass it around it passes around okay i can pass my object around using a function around if the, everything's fine and dandy but what if I want to pass an object of top multiply that always has the values 10 and 20 not by default so I could have like I can call a multiply that oh, let me give you a better example let me just do it like this this is better so um, say I write a function called uh, line to draw a line so I'm gonna have O stream reference line <clears throat> and a line is uh, uh, drawn with a character obviously and it has certain length okay and then I want uh, yeah I want to print this thing so I'm gonna say for uh, say len greater than zero and len minus minus <clears throat> and I want to uh, I don't need that and c out ch so that's that and then c out uh return c out okay so that's my line it prints a line so if i can actually see over here line say with asterisks uh, with asterisk and 10 uh, like 20 of them and then go to no line so so I do this and, and I print 20 asterisks. Okay, are we okay with this? Okay. But let's say I want to print 40 dashes. And that's it. I want to print 40 dashes. And I want that to be a function. One way to do it to, is to actually create a function called 40 dashes and call this in there. Or I can wrap the line bind it with specific arguments and pass this as a function without an argument around so 
what do I do? I'm going to say, it, instead of writing it like this, <clears throat> I'm going to say auto, say dash 40, let's say. I have 40 dashes. will be set to <clears throat> bind. And then this bind of mine will receive the line and pass the dash and the uh, and uh, 40 to it. So now this dash becomes a function with no arguments that prints 40 dashes. So now I can say over here dash 40 and L. There you go. So if you want to have a function bound to certain arguments and pass that function without arguments to some place, that's your friend, binding. Okay? Again, the use is going to appear when we are dealing with uh, when we are dealing with algorithms and stuff. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's bind. So ed binding. Uh, Also, if you want to, um, um, uh, the example in the book is actually pretty good. So in here, let's say I have void increment, and in here I have integer reference x and integer reference y. Now, if I, if I, uh, and in here I'm going to say add one to x, and add one to y. So it's going to add 1 to x and y. Now, in here, if I have a couple of values, a, 10, and b, 10, okay? So I have two values in here, a, b, a, 10, and b, 10. Now, oh, oh I'm changing the wrong, the wrong file. Copy. Let me not save it. Don't save. There we go. So... <sighs> Now I have, uh, so in here, um, uh, if I say increment, inc, okay, um, um, auto, okay, uh, uh, add, add one, let's call it auto add one, and I'm going to say uh, bind inc a and b. If I do something like this and I call the add one, so I'm going to say add one over here. So I bound to that one. Now I'm going to say C out A and B. You will see that <coughs> if I run this program, three years later, there you go. If I run this program, nothing has changed. So what happened? What happened was that I cannot pass uh, references to algorithms if I, because ref, everything is passed by value to them. How can I pass these things to them? I can pass them using a reference wrapper. Now, how to get a reference wrapper out of a regular thing? So instead of putting ampersand over here, what can I do to actually so yeah, it doesn't accept it like that. So what can I do over here to pass a reference wrapper of A instead of reference? That's called ref. So if you call the function ref, the, the, the reference wrapper, uh, the uh, ref, uh, um, what should we call it? Uh, uh, the function template ref, it actually creates a reference wrapper of A pass to bind. And now if I actually run it, you will see that uh, a is incre increased by 1 because it has a reference. So at any place that you cannot use a reference, a reference wrapper is your friend, and uh, that's how, it's supposed to, how it works. So that's ref for you. Uh, are we okay with this? So if you have an algorithm, and that algorithm is supposed to return a value by reference, you pass a ref like that as a reference wrapper. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's the reference wrapper. B C D E. Ref. 
Let's see if you see. Oh, wrong. E dash ref dot cpp. Delete. Dash. And that brings us to algorithms. So I have written this ginormous thing long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. We're going to use that and I'm going to just bring it step by step and explain how things work. I'm not going to write the whole code over here. So this is the main I have. So what I have over here, I have a class of type employee, as you see, ladies and gents. Uh, employee has a salary, employee number, some name over here. Uh, constructor, assignment operator, greater than operator, created between uh, an employee and a value, an employee and another employee. It can be casted to a double. It can print itself out and the printout is overloaded. Very simple. This is an OP244 class over here for us. Are we okay with this? Beautiful. So now we have this employee. Now, in here, I'm creating vector of type employee, and I'm putting all these employees over here for me. Okay, so I have the employees in there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do in here, I am going to, so just for us to see what we have, I'm going to say uh, e.size. That returns the number of employees that I have in that vector, which is essentially 19 of them. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a vector of type doubles and uh, I'm going to call it taxes. I want to calculate how much every employee uh, will have to pay tax for the income. So I'm going to put taxes over here and uh, um, I'm going to say this tax is, uh, the vector tax uh, is to the size of e dot size and 0 0.13 is the thing so that's the amount of taxes that it's going to get charged with it and in here I'm gonna say I'm gonna say how much tax they are going to owe I'm gonna uh, calculate it in this one so I'm gonna say owing and this one is gonna be e dot size uh, and I'm not gonna put anything in them it's just that vector of that size uh, So I have the taxes and these are the amounts. So I want to get these values, multiply each value to uh, 0 0.13 that is in this taxes thingy that I have, and then I'm going to have uh, the results in the OA. <coughs> okay, so uh, that's uh, uh, the variables that I have uh, uh, just to see uh, what we're going to do with it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first create an iterator over here for it. So I'm going to say vector <coughs> employee iterator IT. So that's the first thing. So I'm going to create an iterator. Okay. So I want to, first of all, I want to show all the employees that I have one by one. So um, let's, let's do it like this. Easy breezy. I'm going to bring the code. And there you go. So I'm starting from zero, going right down to uh, the size, set with yada, yada, yada. And I'm going to show the, uh, the employees in, in a row uh, in a vector, just from top to bottom, easy breezy. So those are my employees. I have 19 employees and from one to 19. Okay. Uh, <coughs> obviously, I could have done it using uh, uh, for each, so that's something that I could do. So I'll go for each one element element in there, and I'm going to print them out. So oh, I have to put <laughs> forgot to make it zero. So in here, I'm going to say i is there, i is i is set to zero. So I could have used for each for it to print it, so it's more. Uh, 
a reset. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, uh, comment this. So are we good down to this point? Easy baby steps. I'm going forward, so we can actually see everything. Okay. Now I want to search for an employee over here. Okay, that employee that I want to search for is Mindy Simmons. So I want to search for Mindy Simmons. How do I do that? I can simply say it is equal to find from the beginning to the end name. So the find algorithm starts from here, goes over here, compares it to name. Because in here, in my employee, I have a comparison between my employee and ename, this function will be called automatically inside the find algorithm and the result will be returned as true. So instead of writing a loop going through the thing, I'm using the find. So in here I'm going to say <coughs> if it not equal to e dot end then I can actually show the employee and I can tell exactly which position because uh, the uh, subtraction is overloaded between the two they return an integer and that's the distance between the two so if I run the program if I if it actually finds it it's gonna say that Mindy Simmons yada 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 found this position position 15 and that's position 50 so that's find the algorithm are we okay with this so with find the algorithm you need to have any kind of container start from the beginning go right to the end and you put some value in here but the object inside the find the instances of find should have a defined under defined understanding of what the uh, the uh, comparison operator uh, will return if they don't have this your find is not going to work and that ladies and gentlemen was fine and obviously in here I could uh, if after the, if if this actually is not found I can actually say otherwise element not found and you can change this to something else and, and run it and, and then you'll see that it's gonna say element not found or employee not found or whatever all right that's that next one uh, I want to know how many of these employees have salaries more than eighty thousand dollars. So I'm going to say int num is set to count if again e dot begin e dot end. And then in here I have to in here I have to have a function functor lambda whatever you have that receives an element of e and returns true if the uh, salary is greater than uh, 80,000 that could be simply a lambda so take a look I'm just gonna put this lambda right over here copy and that's the lambda so this lambda receives a, uh, a constant employee reference and it returns if it is greater than 80,000 because this is defined in here for double value and returns if the salary is greater than something. Now this int num of mine will actually show how many employees are making more than 80 thousand so if you want to count again for anything that you want to do there is an algorithm for it. do you want to count and compare every single thing you do a count if and it could count if 
will do that for you and the three employees make their 80,000. Are we okay with count if? There are a million and a half of these type of uh, 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 algorithms. I just picked few of them and I'm just uh, explaining them to you one by one. Transform, yeah, that's a good one. Let's see how transform works. So with transform, you can uh, get the elements of uh, of uh, a container and say uh, 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 get another container, say from which element to which element, what to do with their uh, elements. So I have two parallel arrays and I want the parallel arrays uh, uh, methods to, to do something with each other, whatever you want to do. So you have two parallel arrays and you want the, some action to be happening between the two. This is what you do. So say over here, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm saying transform E dot beginning E dot end. So transform whatever is between E dot beginning E dot end using the values held in taxes taxes what, what was the value tax taxes dot beginning you don't need to mention end because the the length that it's going to go from here is dictated by these so how many elements is here that's the number of things going to go and then i want to store the values in the owing from the beginning and what's going to happen over here now in here i need to uh, let's say for example i want to multiply this one to the va to 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 the employee and see what the value is and the multiplication over here uh because i i casted uh, the double to a salary when the element of uh, E is being multiplied to a double value, it tries to cast it to double, therefore it's going to be multiplying the salary of E to taxes and holding it in the owing. So how do I pass multiplication here? Multiplication is uh, an operator. How can I say multiply? two ways either I can write a function for it and, and my function receives the two things and yada 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 or what I can do is this operator class templates so if you want to multiply it's called multiplies and then you have to mention what type of a thing you want to do so all and uh, bitwise and bitwise or exclusive or division uh, comparison greater than greater than or equal all these operators they created wrappers for them so these operator class templates are essentially wrappers around regular thing there they create functions for you that receive that does multiplication between the things so if you want to multiply you don't need to write that functor all you need to do over here is to say multiplies multiplies doubles and that's going to send uh, a functor um, a func functor that is receiving two uh, multiplications. And as a result, if I actually look at the values that I have, <coughs> so I'm going to say for each start from the beginning, go to end. So for each is another one. It's a for loop. I'm going to say for each start from the beginning, go to the end get a double value print it with this the this uh, um, precision so as you see there is no need for for loops anymore if you want to do a for loop you write the beginning and end of your array over here and then you write what's what you want to happen in every loop and that's your for loop right over there and I and I run this you will see that um, it's going to actually show all the uh, taxes that it calculated based on the values that we had up there are we okay down to here? 
So, ladies and gentlemen, these are uh, down to this point is uh, the four each. Next one uh, is so that's four each, and this one is let me just. Now we could have actually formatted this problem better to like we, like we put a reference over here. We have something over there that counted or a static integer over here that um, got added one by one to add the rows and so, so on and so forth. But um, we're not going to do that down to this point. Um, uh, the next thing I want to do. Oh, let's say let's sort the employees. So sorting employees. How do we do that? I'm going to say over here sort <coughs> e dot beginning e dot end so and then I need to have something to compare the two employees and see which one is bigger than the other one so what do I do uh, I can write a lambda that receives two employees and returns a greater than b or I could have put this one over there greater you see that <laughs> they both work okay try it at home put greater over there and you'll see it's the same result so now it's sorting like that and it says this is greater than that one return true it returns true and then after this I can display all the all the values one by one and uh, it's gonna sort them all so now the employees will be sorted by their name there we go in descending order so if you want it to be ascending then you had to change the direction or do it the other way so, or you could do something like <coughs> you could do certain like something and in, in here you could say oh we don't have that um, we don't have that because in here I don't have less than so this is I only have greater than so this could have, so if I want the other one I'm actually forced to uh, do something like this something very dumb but it works the other one we can use the uh, but here I'm gonna say not yeah and it sorts it in descending order that's that what else do we have here and yeah that's it so these are all the like some examples I just I, I just I'm not just seeing anything else that yeah so if you look at the algorithms that we have <coughs> so so modifiers copy copy if transform fill replace replace if these are all the same way you just pass what you want to be and what pass the values over there and you'll see exactly what happens a copy if oh, that those are examples transform they give an example over there uh, manipulators sort merge uh, all, if again uh, it's it's a waste of time for me to sit and write one by one what are these just look at the examples over here and see what you have and uh, that's how algorithms work you just you pass the container you pass the the logic to to the algorithm and the algorithm applies that logic to every single element of the of the of the algorithm uh, any questions all right I think improve mm. zero plus a 
Uh, forget it. Oh, we'll do it later. Let's, let's put it back. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to put over here algorithm CF algorithms. Again, play with them. You have to keep writing them to see how they work. And then we'll see. Um, and uh, the iterators that are like the, another thing that might be interesting for you to see is that iterators are you can have uh, iterators are created for many different things. And uh, for example, if uh, um, if I want to go through uh, um, a file, just going to show you an example for it. Just take a look at this like with. Uh, do I have an employee here? No. Add uh, existing item. Oh, I don't have it here. Let me let me bring it for. Let me bring it. Let me just explain first what it is. Then I'm going to bring it. So as you see in here, I'm create. I have a file. And file is essentially a container. So I can say create an iStream iterator called employee that is ii over here. Okay. And I'm going to assign it to file. So essentially, this ii becomes an iterator to employee for a file. Then I'm going to create another employee for end of stream. Then I'm going to say create a vector of employees from ii down to end of them. And that will just read everything. And then you can one, one by one print it because this vector wants to populate the uh, uh, values of the employee with iterators of employee in the file that is set for the, for the uh, employee.bean. So it's going to read the file one by one, put it in the employee and up to where there's no more employee no more. And then it stops. So, um, yeah, let me just bring it up and I'll show show it to you. It's like uh, um, where did I put it? So B or D employee. There we go. Copy. There we go. So let me add that. So add. D or B? Why am I so, so? It's D employee. I don't think it's D employee. I think. Let's see if it works. If it works, it means it's correct. Otherwise, I have to go find the files and bring it. No, it didn't work. So, anyways, I'll find it and I'll bring it. I wrote the classes. I'll f uh, I'll I'll bring it and you'll see. We will we'll run it later on. It's um, I don't want to. waste the time on it so I'm just curious give me a second uh, I put it right over here So 
rewrite it from scratch. That's going to take a long time. Yes. There we go. One, two, and three. Copy. So these two are gone. And add existing items. Y keeps going to another directory. Three, four, five notes. All right. Try it one more time. Yeah, there you go. So that's perfect. So what happens over here is this. So again, so we can actually execute it. When this actually runs over here at the moment, uh, when it comes to file and it opens the file, now it says, um, I'm going to have an iterator to this file and I'm going to call it II of type employee. So the iterator that is going to go through the file is in a binary format of type employee, which means it breaks down the binary, binary data inside the file to chunks of employee of type II. And then I'm going to say create another uh, iterator for employee and set it to the end of stream. So this essentially means where it hits, hits the wall. Then I'm going to say create a vector, fill the vector uh, size of the vector, uh, fill the vector with the values that I, with the iterator to, that you have over here, beginning to the end. So essentially I'm saying this is my uh, vector beginning, vector end. So it tries to make a copy of the iterator i inside the file up to EOS in the vector employee and the result of that would be reading them one by one from the file. And therefore everything is there. So um, now, if I run it, you will see that um, uh, uh, so essentially this loads everything to the to to memory. Very expensive, very expensive, but it does it. And now it prints it, prints everything one by one as you see. Okay, so that's what I wanted to uh, explain. So iteration through a file stream is possible like that if you want to write the whole thing up. Or if, um, yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, are we okay with this? All right. So that's. Uh, mm. Um, professor yes uh how is this expensive does it take more memory you mean now yeah, just imagine like you have, if you have a file that is 15 gigs it's going to bring 15 gigs of information in your vector uh, okay you follow what i'm saying because it yeah. populates your vector with whatever you have in a file mm. so it's expensive with with respect to file access it's actually not expensive at all it's very very fast because it brings everything from the file into memory and you traverse through the file so that's a beautiful thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. And the next thing we are to talk, what's the time? It's 6.14 and I'm really out of energy, but uh, uh, let me see. Pointers, pointers. You know what? We're going to start with pointers the next day you're coming in. I really need to... Um, go rest otherwise uh, I have to cancel more classes and make it online and I don't want to so any questions down to this point any questions anyone all right so let's keep it down to this point we're gonna continue with uh, 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 raw pointers first and then after that we're gonna go to smart pointers and uh, multi-threading is the next that's the one that's, I'm going to bake your noodles like crazy. So you'll see exactly 
how things are going to happen over there. Uh, so have yourself a beautiful day. If there is no question, we're going to call it a day. If there is a question, uh, start your microphone. Any question one? Any question two? Have yourself a wonderful day, people. Bye-bye.